Some interesting developments this week, which we thought we'd touch on on Fresh Outlook's Lightning Round. A review of happenings here and abroad and to chat all about it, we welcome back Jason Reddish. He's co-owner of Total Merchant Resources, also was on Shark Tank on CNBC. I saw that episode. Media professor from Fordham University uh, and our friend Paul Levinson and also Matthew Tiermond. He's deputy director at American Transparency. Gentlemen, welcome back. So let's get a little lighter for this segment if we can. Uh, Frank Sinatra's 100th birthday. Listen, he was... You were right uh, out of the box with this one. Start spreading the news. <laughs> Look, he's one of a kind. No one has ever had the style and delivery that Sinatra You still had. think no one has ever yeah. come yeah. after him that could fit that bill? Harry Connick Jr., well, uh, look, Michael Jackson, maybe? okay, but what Sinatra could do with a lyric and a melody, whatever the song was, and he didn't write really any of the songs, but he would take a song that someone else wrote and make it completely his own by bending the words just I, at the I right I think you time. have some Frank Sinatra CDs in the car right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, How his, about you? His selections sure. were unbelievable. As mm -hmm. a matter of fact, um, I'm in a jazz trio, and we were doing Ruby My Dear by Thelonious Monk, right. which is a very underground type tune, and I'm like, wait a second, this is Angel Eyes. Yeah. And that's when I realized Sinatra was into Thelonious Monk. That's I right. mean, for somebody to be that into, you know, that tuned in to, to the jazz scene, he's definitely one of the best jazz singers of all time, male-wise, I mean, Ella Fitzgerald is probably on yeah. the female side, sure. I would say. Sure. You know, the stuff she did with Louis Armstrong was mm -hmm. just unbelievable, but Sinatra definitely should but get But also it. you have his machismo as well. You know, every guy wanted yeah. to be uh, Frank and Sinatra. And he was broke. Yeah. He was broke. During the Rat Pack. Well, uh, Ava Gardner basically re rejuvenated his career with uh, Pal Joe. Plus, yeah. plus yeah. you, you know, from here to eternity. Don't, don't realize about sure. Sinatra, there's a technological component. He was really the first vocal artist who was able to benefit from editing in the audio production. So, for example, if he was singing a song and he hit a bad note at the very end of the song, he could go back in and sing the note just right on key, and they splice it together. I have together. heard that he was a perfectionist, and yeah. it really yeah. shows in everything. Well, we have rare unanimity here. We all agree that Frank Sinatra yeah. was okay, one of America's the same one, last, one last note. Oh, if ahead. it wasn't for From Here to Eternity, yeah. he would have never signed with Columbia. Yep. And right. all True. of these masterpieces that you're listening to, True. you probably would have never heard of. Mm. So, I mean... Unbelievable. Good, good yeah. irony behind that. Let's talk about the Golden Globe Awards. My uh, smartphone went off cr like crazy. I, f I forgot if it was Wednesday or Thursday with all the nominees. Uh, best picture, we have Carol. It's a mid 1950s story about uh, a young woman who falls for an older woman. It's the first really comedy that, I uh, should say, um, drama that broaches the subject of. Uh, of homosexuality with regard to women. Uh, there's also Mad Max Fury Road, which is a side thr fi thriller. The Reverend, an 1800s Leo DiCaprio survival skills of bear attack. He's uh, attacked by a bear and survives. Room is a mother son held captive outside world. And uh, also Spotlight, which is that great movie about uh, the Boston Globe journalist uh, when they uncovered pre police uh, priest molesting children and the investigation that followed. Anybody have a favorite here? You've, se you've said you saw a couple of these. I, yeah, I think, I mean, the LGBA community is huge when it comes to the Golden Globes in Hollywood. So you which, think Carol is the I think Carol, I've, I'd put all my money on that. Well, one. Mad Max Fury Road was absolutely atrocious. I saw it on a plane, <laughs> a plane to Warsaw. Why is it a Golden Globe nominee? And I, it just, it tells you that there's a race <laughs> yeah. to the bottom in Hollywood these yeah, days. Yeah. There's not a lot of good stuff But what stuff are you really produced. trying to say, Matthew? Uh, <laughs> we, we need new and better, more uh, creative movies. Paul? I think Spotlight is the best. Uh, I would agree with you. Yeah, but I think Mad Max was very disappointing because the original Mad Max movies were Thought excellent. Provoking. Really thought Yeah, and yeah. I'm, you know, a science fiction author. I'm a science fiction fan. I was mm -hmm. president of the Science Fiction Rise of America for a right. couple of years. I'm always in favor of science fiction, but not the latest Mad not Max Not this movie. one. Sorry. All right. Uh, best motion picture, comedy, or musical. There's a, there's a bunch here that don't make sense. The Big Short. I don't know if it's a comedy or a musical. It's certainly not a musical. And that's uh, all about the housing and credit bubble in the uh, early 2000s. Joy, which uh, stars uh, Jennifer Lawrence, and she is uh, portraying Joy Mangano, who is the big HSN QBC uh, person. Uh, the Martian. Uh, again, I don't know if that's a comedy or it's musical. Not, it's yeah. not a comedy. And I don't know why it's in that category. That's yeah. the one about Matt Damon being left on uh, Mars. If only uh, it were real. Spy, <laughs> Melissa McCarthy, a desk deputy or desk duty held, uh, helps uh, Jude Law's character in this particular movie. And Trainwreck, which is certainly a comedy starring Amy Schumer. Any of those uh, jump at you? The Big Short, uh, Joy, The Martian Spy, or Trainwreck? Well, I don't know who uh, 
finds, as you say, yeah, I don't know how the big short is. Uh, it's, uh, I, it couldn't even be termed a tragic comedy, no matter how they treat it. Uh, I'm excited to see it because I, I, I love, more. yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I love Michael Lewis. This is adapted from his book. The book was excellent, mm -hmm. uh, so I'd like to see how they treat it. Uh, I know that a lot of the movies that they've uh, created out of the Wall Street experience from the last 10, 15 years have been pretty bad. So I have but a little I've bit heard of this one really explains it to Mr. and Mrs. Yeah. John Q. Public because yeah. it is complicated. It is. And you yeah. were in the Th thick of that, it, Jay. That's, that's the worst part, the informational lines. Yeah. When yeah. It, I understand, and Spielberg's brilliant at doing that, yeah. right? when, when he'll have a school teacher explaining it to a yeah. classroom, right, right. and he'll use that medium. Right. But too often they sell narratives, and that's what I'm worried about yeah. here. Is like the too big to fail they're, they're, on HBO, Yes, exactly. Like, okay. They're going to yeah. editorialize subliminally what the causes were, and they're gonna, I already can see it. Even though the book didn't do this, they're going to probably lay all the blame on the, uh, the evil banks without the government intervention mechanism that allowed well, the evil banks to get Well, getting back to the mood for a second, how do you explain involved? an ETF to Mr. and Mrs. Jack? Uh, I think that's and, pretty and, easy. And, yeah. It's a whole bunch of stocks. Well, one I'm say, I, uh, I think The Martian is an important movie. As a know. comedy or a musical? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's prophecy. <laughs> you know. It's prophecy. Yeah, well, because yeah. listen, it's, it's what it is, in my view, that makes us different from any other species on Earth. Namely, that we can actually get off this And planet. the curiosity of what's yeah, out there. get out into the cosmos. All right, we just have a minute or so left. Time magazine has named uh, German uh, leader Angela Merkel as Person of the Year. Uh, some people said the Pope uh, should have gotten it. There were some other nominees there. Angela Merkel, good choice. Hor uh, horrible. Uh, I on honestly think that Person of the Year should have been, and neither of them for good reasons, Trump or Putin. Really? Uh, I think Merkel has... Uh, just continued policies over the last five years, culminating this year and creating more problems for Europe. But she did welcome the refugees. That, I welcome. Mean, she imported cheap labor. If you saw the, the, the list, I mean, Baghdadi was on that list, which I, I, I always like the list because it's, you know, Hitler was... Hitler yeah. and yeah. Stalin yeah. were Stalin. on the list. It's not the best days. person of the year. But it's the person with the most yeah. impact. But, you know, Trump would have been absurd. Again, because all he does is talk. Right. What he, has he the man accomplished? the narrative in this country. Well, and so that far, many people would say that he's era. a successful businessman. Okay, but he hasn't done such he's great business. Know, but he wouldn't win the award year. for that. It would be for changing right. the political discourse right. in such right. a dramatic way, which I think is a very, very big deal. Yeah. Merkel did nothing this year uh, on a year-over-year -year basis that was differentiated from anything she's done the last five years except expanded bad policy that's destroying Europe. I'm a European citizen as well. I'm there on the ground, and it is not in good shape, and it is very largely to blame from Merkel, uh, the European Parliament, and European Commission, and the ECB. All right. Have, well, the Pope. We run out of time. But gentlemen, thank you very much. We appreciate it. And I'm Frank Cipolla. We'll see you next time on Fresh Outlook.